video, we will be discussing the model called Spiral Dynamics. Spiral Dynamics is a model of develop, developmental psychology developed by Claire Graves, Don Beck, and Christopher Cowan. They went to various different parts of the world and they studied different cultures and they noticed that uh, for the survival situations of cultures in general, you know, it doesn't matter how developed they are, but there's always some progression chain um, for some given region or stage on the continuum. Uh, they notice that there's a trend to move in one direction, but not so much of a trend to move in the other. Um, and as I talk about the model in a bit more depth, we'll see what I mean by that. So spiral dynamics was, uh, uh, it, it's divided into various different stages. They took the continuum of development and put it into different regions, regions that they called stages. And these stages tend to alternate between an individual and collective focus. Uh, and they name the stages after colors. So stages that are individualistic tend to have warm colors. Stages that are communal tend to have cool colors. Uh, it, it's just a labeling thing. The, co the, the colors themselves don't actually matter. They're just labels. However, you will want to remember them because I will be referring to the colors a great many times over the course of this channel. So lab labels or not, you will want to make sure you're familiar with the color names. So the first stage is called stage beige. It is an individualistic stage. And stage beige is the most primitive of the stages. Uh, I refer to it sometimes as stage one. Um, stage one is the first stage that one can really be in if they're human. In order to go lower than beige, you would basically have to be something other than human. Um, beige is basically like cave people, the Stone Age. Um, communities are roaming bands that just travel around a certain area. They're usually somewhere between 5 and 20 individuals, uh, just tiny little clans, not really even tribes, but just sub-tribes. They're, uh, they're very... Uh, they're reaction based. That's their, their mode. They they see a predator, and what they think of is, you know, do I or see, see a creature? And depending on what it is, if it's a predator or some other animal, they'll be like, um, you know, should I hide from it? Should I run from it? Or should I club it over the head and eat it? Uh, their thought process is extremely shallow, uh, and it's usually based on. Uh, uh, just what happens to be immediately in front of them. Uh, in the event that uh, other creatures or other roaming bands are encountered, their main instinct is that the males of the band will um, go to the defensive while the females will cower. Very simple basic structure. Um, there's not that many modern examples of beige in the current world. It just doesn't really exist anymore. However, uh, I think that the San Bushman in South Africa may be one example. Um, uh, I, I might talk about that a bit more. I, I'm not going to go into them right now. Anyway, um, the next stage, the second one, is called Stage Purple. Stage Purple is something that people might be a bit more familiar with. Uh, it is uh, a communal stage, and it is tribal. So uh, it's the, the thing that I kind of alluded to in the systems video, where it's villages of people that have a hunter-gatherer culture. They have a real language. Uh, that, that's one thing I, I probably should have mentioned about beige. Beige is basically pre-language. They do communicate with like grunts and motions and things, but th they don't really have a language to begin with, but purple does. So language is the first stage. I mean, la language is sort of like the catalyst for stage purple. Um, uh, purple, <clears throat> uh, as I alluded to, it's... Um, it tends to be very animistic in its thought process. 
they build customs around their particular village culture. They, um, <clears throat> they, they tend to perceive the world where everything is living, everything is spirit-filled in some sense. There's, there's spirits everywhere, and they have to do uh, prayers and offerings and rituals to appease the spirits because they're afraid of the spirits. Um, Halloween is actually a modern incarnation of purple. I mean, not, not that we have tribes anymore, but um, Halloween, which at one point was called Sawen, was a purple ritual that was done about the spirits. And uh, over time, it just sort of got integrated into higher culture and is just kind of um, uh, <laughs> modernized into into this thing where people just dress up and, and profess themselves to get candy and so forth. Um, not, not real purple anymore, but it did come from purple. So, um, examples of purple would be the Native Americans, uh, some tribes in Africa, um, tribes in um, the Middle East. There's still a lot of purple tribes in the Middle East. Uh, purple tends to have a much more laid-back setting than uh, most people in the modern day would really understand. Uh, they do have laws, like they have customs, but the, the laws are, they're not something that people will be directly punished for usually if they break. Uh, people don't have to work that much to live in a purple culture, and it's just because they're so communal. They usually have a lot more people in the village than they actually need to get all the work done. So it, it tends to be a, a lot more lax as the stages go, but that definitely is going to change as we continue going up. Um, so uh, stage red is the third stage, and stage red sh shifts back into being individualistic, and it also is the... <laughs> The, the stage where it's no, no more no more nice guys. So stage red is about power, domination, exploitation, and control. Stage red is something that really begins, I think, when tribes start discovering metal such as iron and they realize they can make iron into weapons. And uh, eventually, I, I think what happens is that they realize that they can use their new metal technology to invade other tribes and steal their resources. And um, they do this just because they can. And uh, eventually these tribes start becoming tiny little empires where they just assimilate people so they can do horticultural sorts of roles. You know, they want bigger communities, want more, more farming, and also they at some point probably discovered that they can do farming just as they're exploring other tribes and taking them over. Um, so red is the first stage that really gets into slavery. Uh, slavery is, uh, uh, it's, it's not something I agree with, but it is something that all cultures do seem to need to go through just because they need to explore it. And Red is the one that really is gung-ho about slavery, conquest, war. Um, so the Roman Empire is basically what things look like when stage Red is taken very, very far. Now, to be fair, the Roman Empire actually had a little bit of stage Blue as well. Stage Blue is the next one. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, but stage Red is focused on empires. Uh, it's focused on uh, telling myths about uh, people who did great feats. Uh, you know, the, the Romans and the Vikings, the Mongols, these are all examples of red culture. And they all it started out as being smaller communities of purple that just slowly grew and grew and grew until they <laughs> just decided they couldn't live with each other anymore and, and went to war and... Uh, in the Roman Empire's case, decided to take over the world, and it, it didn't work because red by itself is still too low consciousness to actually be able to do something like take over the world. But red does tend to have this, this idea that it can. 
And uh, as you've probably guessed, people generally don't that people who live in a red culture for the most part don't don't tend to like red that much unless they're at the very top and because of that eventually uh things do change and uh eventually the culture swifts back into a communal focus which is stage blue uh stage blue is the the law and order stage stage blue comes about mostly with the advent of writing um, not, not that writing is necessarily something that immediately moves people to stage blue, but I, I think that writing is something that people actually need for blue. So blue is often uh, sort of codified as like the religious stage. You don't have to be religious to be in blue, but uh, it definitely is exceedingly common among people who are blue centered. Uh, it's belief in uh, a very strong belief in a God and a code of ethics. Um, uh, again, you don't have to believe in God, but it, it's very common. Uh, and of course, there are some blue cultures that believe in more than one God, like Hinduism is also very bluish. Um, but for some reason, monotheism does tend to be rather common. Uh, so Christianity, Islam, Judaism, um, yeah, I already mentioned Hinduism and, you know, things, things like that. They have a very strong absolutistic code of ethics uh, that they, they believe in dualistic thinking in a sort of honest sense. You're either with us or against us. Yes or no. Who do you stand for? No middle ground. Uh, and the reason why they take this very strong absolutistic mentality is because they're afraid of red. They don't want people descending back into a red culture, becoming egocentric. And so they, they have to they, they have to convince themselves and everyone else that they should always be constantly shameful of themselves. You're a bad person. Stop stop wanting things. Uh, stop stop thinking of uh, of what you could be if if you had all all manner of stuff. Um, uh, they, they tend to be uh, guilt-driven, constantly guilt-tripping themselves. Did I follow the laws of the culture? Oh no, I made a mistake somewhere. Um, and uh, they also tend to be very ethnocentric and uh, oftentimes nationalist. Red is also nationalist, but uh, blue is just like a different manifestation of that. Because where red is just about our, our culture is the best, it should win, it should dominate, blue is sort of like... Um, you know, our, our people are the chosen people and our laws are the right ones. And uh, our, our blue culture should take over things simply because we are the good people. We're saving other people by invading them. You know, the, the settlers who uh, settled the United States or what would become the United States were definitely very blue centered. They, they believed they were helping the Native Americans as they were slaughtering them and diseasing them and just doing terrible things to them that they just, that the settlers just, just didn't really want to, that they didn't really want to look at what they were doing, didn't want to face the fact that they were being horrible and destructive. And so they, they used their religion to try to excuse things. They convinced themselves they had some manifest destiny um, and uh, blue does a lot of things like that. It, it, it tends to be, it, it has all the best intentions, but it manifests them oftentimes in all the absolute worst ways. And it's because of a general ignorance. Um, like the stages below it, blue is still closed minded, probably a bit more open minded than red or purple, but still definitely a uh, backward looking, uninventive, very rigid set in its ways. Um, you know, a lot of, um, it, it's one of the, it, blue is the first of the conventional stages. So, um, you know, it, a lot of conservatives in the modern day tend to be in stage blue. Um, you know, now to be fair in the U S uh, conservatives, they're not just blue. They do have a lot of, uh, orange, which is the next stage above that I'll talk about. Um, after blue um so c conservatives in the modern day that they've they've moved a little bit beyond the the medieval nonsense but they, they're still blue leaning there's still a lot of indications they're uh ethnocentric uh believe that their people is inherently the best the righteous they want a set uh a, a set 
a code of ways, don't want to change, don't want to let in other, other cultures because they're uh that they're not they're not protestant they're not they're not white you know things like that um so uh, of course there there are good healthy incarnations of blue there, there's healthy and unhealthy incarnations of all the stages I don't mean to seem like i'm just hating on blue or red or something um like what one thing that blue is very good at doing is it's good at setting up structure um and also, it's very good at actually just having a, a general uh, attempt at honesty. I call it an attempt just because it doesn't really do a whole lot of deep thinking. But when it comes to holding to principles, Blue does tend to be very good at that. It never bothers to question if those are principles one should have in the first place. But it is very good at actually trying to hold to things. Uh, which is actually something that would be a nice thing to see more of in the modern world. There's, no one really has any principles anymore. Even the modern incarnations of conservatives these days are more orange than blue. They've kind of left a lot of it behind. They do still have some blue, though. This has turned into a long episode, so I think I'm going to make this part one of Spiral Dynamics, and pretty soon I will put out part two, because uh, there's just really a lot to go into here. So I guess this will be it for now. <clears throat>